thank you for coming to this series of moderated conversations from uh, UN 75 celebrating the first 75 years of uh, UN's history. Our idea in marking this anniversary is rather than looking back on the history of the UN, to engage the cultural and artistic community on looking forward and, and having discussions on the great issues of our times and what the, the culture and art, artistic community have to say. I would say to everyone that culture is the soul of your country. The spirit of your culture is every generation that came before you and that you are merely a caretaker, a shepherd of it, a conductor, a channeler of it, that is, as I said, no more or no less important than philosophy, religion, psychology. It's just part of the whole ball of wax. I think averages breed distrust, and I think most of the numbers that we've presented are presented as averages without breaking down who is affected by something, the disproportionate impact of all kinds of things, whether it's um, environmental degradation or this pandemic. And I think the more that policymakers can talk in non-aggregate terms and break down those averages, the more that they will foster the public's trust in the information that they share. Let's not wait for the fire to be at the door. Uh, let's start planning now. We've managed to take drastic action to deal with COVID-19. We can take drastic, effective action to deal with climate change. Those of us still alive open our eyes and minds to the desperate need of intelligent collaboration to save ourselves and our common civilizations from what we are about to convert into a sinking ship. Problems the world is facing are world-scale problems. Solving them starts with the modesty of admitting to that and collaborating together. It is so important for us right now, if we want to uh, defend and if we want to protect our environment, if we want to act uh, for, against global warming, to understand from the philosophy, to understand from the indigenous practices. Looking at how can we honor uh, the contributions that indigenous people have had over thousands of years, getting indigenous voices into becoming uh, part of the solutions that our world faces, but also creating systems by which um, the wealth uh, that is being generated or the power and control can be shared. To the government of the U.S., I would say, you know, focus more on public health measures that ensure um, equal access to um, to healthcare, to disparities um, in healthcare, you know, examine why those disparities exist through stru structural racism, create new models, new examples to address this. I also encourage um, governments around the world to look to the healing potential of the arts. I think it's time to look at a new kind of New Deal, one that takes a look at certainly what infrastructure changes we need in terms of climate, how we can put people back at work, how can creative people be involved in this, and, and take a look at systemic systems that have kept uh, people on the fringes, on the margins, and address those issues uh, at long last. Health is often look like, looked at as an expense. It is not. It is an investment. You know, it's been proven over and over again when you invest in health for all, benefits you receive are manifold in terms of economic prosperity uh, across the board. Uh, but I would also argue that arts funding is often considered an afterthought, a nice to have, you know, when there are other things. I would argue that WHO has proven that art as an investment is one of the soundest investments that a, a, a society can make in improving well-being, uh, as defined in not just physical health, but also mental health and social health.